What's popping to you guys? Mikel Bennett back Poppington. here. Hi, <clears throat> Dominique here. Yes, my lovely wife. So tonight <laughs> we're gonna do a Q and A, a credit Q and A. I'm not even sure how to set it. Let me see if I can set it up. No questions yet. Okay. What's going on, everybody? As you come in, let us know where you where you tapping in from. We're gonna do a Q and A tonight, y'all. Y'all got questions? We got answers tonight. All right. Let me see if I can set it up for Q and A. I don't know how to do it either. But yeah, what's good, y'all? What's good, y'all? Where y'all tapping in from, man? We just doing a Q&A tonight. What's Chicago? Okay. Chicago, man. Georgia. Chicago. More Chicago. Okay. My man Don P from out Chicago. Akron, Ohio. LeBron. Pennsylvania. <laughs> LeBron. <laughs> Connecticut. Connecticut. All right, guys. So yeah, just y'all can start dropping y'all um y'all questions when it comes to credit, and we'll start answering them, guys. London. Mm -hmm. Wow. If you're new here, my name is Mikkel Bennett. My wife, Dominique Bennett, and uh, we are the proud owners of YouCanFixYourCredit.com. Right. So we can help you to yeah. fix your credit. We can help you to learn how to fix your credit. We don't do it for people, but we teach thousands of people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you get late credit card payments off? Absolutely. Yeah. Is the account open or closed? If the account's closed, you can remove it. If the account's open, you can also, you don't want to delete the late payments, you want to reverse the late payments. What's going on, y'all? So where y'all tapping in from, man? All we doing a, we doing a- That's also in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. that's where we're at. We doing a credit Q and A tonight, and it's cold as hell up here, y'all. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Somebody in, what's that? Florida. I know, but how do you say that? Pompano? Maybe. Pompano Beach, Florida? Okay. <laughs> we gonna be in Florida in less than a month. Yes. Actually, is it? No, not less than a month Just yet. about a we'll month. Be in, yeah, we'll be there end of January. Shooting the podcast out there real quick. How do I get business credit separate from personal credit? So, I mean, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so getting, so first thing you wanna do, obviously, is you wanna start a business, right? Now, there are multiple ways in how you can go about getting business credit and starting business credit and build that paid X score up, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people talk about getting those net 30 accounts and things like that, but honestly, we didn't do that. If your personal credit, like your personal credit profile is solid and it's structured and set up the right way and your business is set up the right way and you've checked all those boxes that need to be checked, then you don't necessarily need to get those net 30s. We did not need to get those, right? Right, Key Bank never had one. Was the first bank that extended a business um, line of credit and a ch uh, credit card to us, business, mm -hmm. okay? So, and that even happened for my other business that I went to Key Bank for, again, didn't get any net 30s for my photo booth company. And we were able to get both a business credit card and a business line of credit. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily, you know, have to go the net 30 route. It really, it, it's personal preference, honestly. We appreciate we the badge, Kendi. <clears throat> so basically what we're trying to tell you is, all right, so can you just tell them a little bit about your background? Because the net 30, mm -hmm. um, so you want to get business credit separate from personal credit. And that's mm -hmm. really hard to do. But Dominique can tell you, like, basically from her experience in the banking industry mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so I was in banking for 16 years. I just retired this past May. And I was on both the retail side, which is like your branches, your tellers, your assistant managers, things like that, people in the branches. And then I was also in the commercial real estate side as well. That's where I spent the last few years of my career on the commercial real estate side, right? And it's a completely different like ball game. Like it's crazy over on that side. Like if you've ever, worked in retail and then you go to the lending side like it's two completely different worlds and the thing about commercial real estate people like we were working with millionaires billionaires like people that have these huge commercial real estate portfolios and they were all personally guaranteeing everything millions of dollars 50 million 100 million dollar loans they're personally guaranteeing everything it was honestly never a question because when it comes to banks right banks want to make sure that they're not taking a big risk. Like they want to take as little risk as possible. So when you're co-signing basically your business saying, Hey, like, you know, I'm 
saying that I'm going to pay this back and if my business can't pay it back then you can come after after me personally for the money they're going to be like okay like we feel comfortable right because the underwriter is going to look at everything they're going to look at what kind of deposit accounts you have what kind of credit cards you have they're going to look at your overall credit profile like how are you or how have you handled money in the past that would that you borrowed right and they're going to look at all of those things mm -hmm. and they're going to look at how your business is structured okay they're going to look at all of those things even the members like down to the members so it wasn't just like the main dude that was uh personally guaranteeing it was all the members that were personally guaranteeing so everybody had to have their credit in a good situation okay mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind like if if you're really serious about your business you need to be really serious about your personal credit too because in the future, as your business grows and you're going to need more money, you're going to need more funding, you need to have your personal credit in order. Because mm -hmm. that's your right. resume. Like, that's what I say all the time. I Just, mean, I don't, I don't want to say that it's not true that you can't get business credit, like, just using your EIN. You can. But it's extremely difficult. And right. the people, people that preach that and sell that information <clears throat> they're literally just selling you the information the because I, yeah like people want that so bad like people want that so bad like wait i could just go get an llc do a couple things that won't cost me over ten thousand dollars and i could go get a hundred thousand dollars and that makes sense to me mm -hmm. like i'm gonna go do that ten times over so yeah. it's just like it everybody wants it so people actually package that up and sell it to you Right. And then, you know, you go to the bank, you got 15 net 30s, you got a couple net um, 60s, all of all of this extra stuff, and then they still pull your credit report, and then you don't get what you desire. Right. So that's why we really, really focus on letting you know, hey, all this business credit we have and all these business credit cards we have, they're like, all... Oh, I'll make sure I don't have my license in here. <laughs> like, we literally, um, you know, educate people on the real... All right, because there are other people out there that are just sharing other information that they hear from other people. Yeah. Where anything that I share, like I'm consulting with people that I know. Okay, so like anything that we learn, I'm yeah. like, okay, this is what I learned. I'm researching it. I'm going out and consulting with commercial, sorry, with commercial real estate lawyers. Okay, I'm consulting with title companies. I'm consulting with all these different avenues that do business, mm -hmm. you know, to confirm that this is true. Because even for me, like I'll see people out there sharing about all this other stuff, and I'm like, that's BS. Like that's not even true, right? And I'll screenshot it, send it to someone, and I'm like, this is BS. Like why do people keep sharing this stuff? Like this isn't even true, right? And then that's like putting people in a bad position because then that person's going to apply for the funding and they're getting denied, right? And You're like they're starts. just screwed, like it sucks. So how do you reverse late payments? So the way you reverse late payments is there's a, if you look at my post, if you go look through my post and look for the one that talks about late payments, I typically put a sequence that you need to follow. And the very first thing is you wanna call the creditor, mm -hmm. especially if, you know, you have to identify is it open or closed first because right. that's going to determine how you're going to go about the plan of action to delete it or reverse it. Yeah. So I would need more on that. So just real quick with late payments, okay? Like I posted a reel just, the, just yesterday on this, okay? As long as you have a good payment history with that credit card company, with that lender, they're going to want to work with you on it, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you have your credit card set up on auto pay for at least your minimum payment every single month because you don't want to miss a payment. But things happen, mm -hmm. right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to call. Like we had a student of ours that um, thought she had it set up on auto pay, had a really good history with them. She didn't even realize that she was late until it reported to her credit report and she got an alert from the credit report or from the credit uh, bureaus, right? That there was an late payment and mm -hmm. she was like what and that's scary because once it's on your credit report like you gotta start fighting you don't know if it's gonna stay if you can get it removed but because she had such a good relationship and a good history already built with that credit card company and it was capital one and they can be a little bit more stingy on things she called them and they were like no problem we'll take care of it we're gonna reverse the late fee and we're gonna send a letter to all three credit bureaus right mm -hmm. so you know, I told her, make sure you get a copy of that letter that they're sending as well so that you can use that. Because when it comes to fighting these credit bureaus, you want to have proof. You are your own lawyer. You're representing yourself. So the more proof you have, so if you're paying anybody off, 
if you're um, settling any debt, anything like that. Do not pay a dime until you have documentation that states we are going to remove this from your credit bureau reports or your credit profile upon payment. Okay, you do not want to do anything because there's a no lot of point. Com- there's a lot of companies out here that are going to say, you know, we'll settle this, but we're not going to remove it. Well, that's BS. Why are you going to pay it then? Like that's right. stupid. Like, don't no do point. that. <laughs> <laughs> I need some funding to kickstart my business. Um, yeah, so we we have our 100. So I want to let everybody know that right now we're running our holiday sales. All of our courses are on sale. For thirty-two dollars, right? Except for our five days to freedom, which is fifty dollars. Okay. Because it's normally a hundred. It's a more right. expensive course. And when you purchase, you get a twenty-dollar coupon as well, so you can go grab something else. Right now, we have our credit essentials bundle, mm-hmm. which is does, that's the first link in both of our bios, and that's the course that so many people have been taking to fix up their credit, remove negative items, increase their score, and understand how to go about applying for new credit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, our 100K business credit bundle, that is specifically for the people that's like, you know what, my credit is good, I just need to go get funded. Mm -hmm. I don't know the ins and outs of getting this funded. That's gonna show you how to go and get funded. And there's three main ways to go and get funded. The first way, the easiest way, which everybody should be focused on, is improving your personal credit to leverage it so that you can leverage it right using your personal credit and leveraging it Mm -hmm. the second way is through payment processors right if you have a business most like a good business is going to be generating revenue my question to you is how How are are you you? taking those payments Mm -hmm. right because most payment processors literally every single payment processor we've ever used (laughs) offer us funding right even right so like when we're talking like that we're talking we're talking specifically about like paypal um uh stripe quickbooks even ebay started doing working capital okay and they're even giving shopify you, they're giving you loans based off of the amount of money that you're making in your business and then what they do as a repayment mm-hmm. is they're taking a percentage of each sale that you make right so even these credit card companies that are out here, like merchant credit card companies like, that you can work with, they give out loans too, okay? My dad owns a restaurant, and he, in the past when he was struggling, like during COVID and stuff, he was getting loans from his merchant services account because he needed the loans, right? Like he also did the PPP um, loan as well. But during that time, he was struggling, and he needed to take out that loan. So when you're using any type of payment processor except Venmo, okay, mm-hmm. Cash App, no, like don't use them because they're not doing you any good. Like, yes, it's going into your bank account, but it's not doing you any <laughs> right. good when, okay, think of it like this, right? Like we accept payments via Stripe, QuickBooks. We're able to get working capital loans from both of those, mm-hmm. okay? Had we been accepting Cash App, Venmo, things like that, Cash. like we wouldn't be able to get those things. Correct. You know, so. so simple way to get funding. Right. The next way would be, um, you know, using your EIN number and building that up. And we don't really have a lot of experience with that because we didn't have to do that. How do I get a student loan? Okay, let me see. Off my credit report, and do you guys do mentorship? So, mm-hmm. good. So, uh, we've had tons of people delete student loans the exact same way that they remove negative accounts. And it all depends on how that student loan is reporting on your credit report. Right. That's going to be the first step. And that's the first step we go through is we teach you how to read your credit report, just like the credit repair company. So there ain't nobody out there that can read your credit report better than you. And every credit report tells a story. Now you don't got to go out here telling all these people all your business. Because mm-hmm. in reality, as a, when I was in credit repair, I didn't necessarily, I, under, I could look at somebody's credit report and tell the whole story myself. I don't care about your excuses about this happened. Oh, they, oh, I couldn't pay that. Out. No, you know you was on vacation. You spent three grand on a vacation. Cool. Let's go ahead and figure yeah, out like, the I solution. Like I don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but, yeah, and then uh, do you guys do mentorship? So, okay. So we do offer a 30-minute uh, mentorship that you can find in both of our bios. It's not really like a mentorship. It's more like a consultation, mm-hmm. and it is more expensive. We really focus our time on group coaching, mm-hmm. which you can find when you purchase any of our courses. We have a Facebook group. We, jack- we just actually hit over 700 people that are in Damn, that Facebook really? group. Yeah, over 700 people. And 
that's where we spend a majority of our time coaching, supporting, answering questions, and things uh-huh. like that. So but, it's um, if you do, are you good? Yeah. If you do want like some type of coaching, I would recommend our five days to freedom. Yeah. That was the last mentorship we held in November, and the it's five days, right? So well, it was actually six because we give a bonus, but. Mm-hmm. Day one is mindset. We had our our military mindset guy come in to let you understand, like, yo, all the information you're about to receive over these next five days, you better buckle up because this is about to go down. You have to be ready for it. Right. I don't, (laughs) like, like, I always tell people usually, like, you should take, like, like, our virtual mentorship first. Right. Before you come to me and get mentored because I'm not going to play with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you every, like, (laughs) <laughs> the We're, reality is the reality. We we don't like to sugarcoat things like when we mentor people because we hold ourselves to a very high standard. Mm-hmm. So we're going to hold people that we mentor to a very high standard as well. So if you come in and you're not serious, you know, like if you want to <laughs> work with us and you're not serious, like we're not going to take you seriously and we're not going to be able to help you. Right. right. So you have to help yourself first and mm-hmm. make sure I would definitely go through that. first. Yeah, Five days to freedom. It got everything that we teach, everything we specialize in. You're going to learn how to understand credit, learn how to get business funding, and you're going to learn how to create an automated business just like this. We do it live in in day six, I think. Day five, we literally, our tax guy Mm -hmm. came in on day two, and then we created a whole digital business for him on day five. And we even had on day three, we had um, one of my friends who's in commercial real estate as well. He's an underwriter, so he walks people through, like, looking for a house, figuring out if it's a good deal what or is not. that alarm? Oh, all right. I have to do email marketing later. But um, it walks you through figuring out if it's a good deal or not and how to price out a deal if you want to purchase real estate. I don't think we're highlighting. So do you guys understand what she said? The dude is a commercial real estate underwriter, right, at Univest, right? Mm-hmm. So he work at the bank and know exactly what the banks are looking for when it comes to you guys wanting to get funding, right? It's basically an inside we had, secret. We had him literally sit there live on the class and answer the questions that people want to know mm-hmm. about investing into real estate, investing into commercial properties, right? Mm-hmm. Or just, you know, getting funding, period, from the bank. That's a big one up. Right. Another big one up is Dominique was in banking for 16 plus years. So, I mean, yeah. How to remove late slash missed car payments on an active account? So, so we, yeah. have a, we have a whole section in our credit essentials bundle that talks about late payments and mm-hmm. how to go about removing them. There's multiple things that you can do and multiple strategies that you can take in order to remove them. The very, you know, last thing you obviously would want to do is remove an active account. But, um, yeah, right. the steps are in there. There's a whole section in there. Mm-hmm. There's so many steps to removing a late payment. It all just matters as far as if you, well, he said it was open. So if it's open then you want to go ahead and call them first. That's step number one. And then there's a law, I think it's US 15 U.S. Code 1666B, timing of payments. That law actually states that no creditor is supposed to report any late payment on your credit report at all, right? right. So if there is a late payment on your credit report, you have to begin exercising that law by disputing, right? Disputing and exercising that law in your disputes in order to help you to remove that late payment. Now you gotta send that in. I mean, bruh, it's so long. I would spend so much time breaking down the late payment sequence, but we literally have it broken down inside of our program. Um, it's only $32, you can get it. Go to the late payment section. But what I would tell you is, there's 52 modules, right? So the late payment module might be at like module 30 something. I really wouldn't skip. It's literally our whole life experience with credit that we break down piece by piece, every section, the fundamentals of credit, how to understand your credit report, when to pay your bills, how to get organized with credit, how to dissect the negative and positive accounts, how to dispute, here's the templates to use for each law, all of that, right? Joseph? No, no, hold on. Someone said about bankruptcy. Okay. Uh, I need to file bankruptcy. How long should I wait to apply? So are you currently in the process of applying for bankruptcy? Because you might not have to. Right, like there might be some things that you can do now before you decide Mm -hmm. filing a bankruptcy. That should be like the end all be all. And like, um, we might be able to help you with that, like, and keep you away from having to do that. Right. And if it comes, if you do have a bankruptcy already, we do have an ebook inside of our program that helps you to 
remove bankruptcies. It's a long process. It starts with the courthouse. You got to get the original document mm -hmm. or get a document from the original courthouse. And that's the beginning of the dispute process to remove a bankruptcy. Okay. And you have to freeze Lexus Nexus. The question's right there. Okay. What if the accounts are closed but still reporting late payments? I would remove it mm -hmm. um, if it's already closed. Like, you can just remove it. They're, the they're doing so much fraudulent stuff. If the account's closed and they're still reporting late payments, yeah. I would go ahead and just dispute it. And most times, they're just going to delete it because they already know that they're, they've already been messing up in the game. What's the best business loan offer to get with low personal credit? It's going to be really difficult, <clears throat> you know, to be able to get that. The best, your best bet would be getting a working capital loan. Um, because they don't do like a hard credit pull. Mm, um, yeah. So that's those. what I would do. I would focus um, on getting working capital. You could try like Fundbox. You can try Capital on Tap. Um, Maybe Fed might be a good one too mm -hmm. as long as you you know get in there and build that internal score up and build that relationship with navy fed right you can you know and it all matters about why the score is low right like you know low is relative but it depends on why it's low is it low because of utilization right is it low because of collections or charge-offs mm -hmm. that doesn't work taking off a late payment by talking to your creditor is there another alternative yes. yeah so the next thing, like I said, I just actually talked about it. You would use U.S. Code 15 or 15 U.S. Code 1666B. That's timing of payments. And when you read that code, it's going to break down exactly what you need to do mm -hmm. as far as contacting the creditor, letting them know, hey, look, this is the law that you're violating. I need this updated. And, yeah. yeah. If they don't remove it, then you will continue to follow up um, disputing process. We break all of that down inside of our credit essentials bundle um, really thoroughly. Okay, um, we. I saw someone had said that we missed a What's question. What's going on, but we, husbands? But we didn't miss a question. We just didn't get to it yet because we were like way up in the comments. We're still making our way to current questions. So it says, "How do I get late payments off my profile? Or accounts are closed." You probably want to remove that account completely if it's closed. And I think we just we just answered that a couple seconds ago. Um, Could somebody get Joseph up out of here? Who? <laughs> Whatever. Gorgeously, whatever. Oh, yeah. whatever. Just let them go. Oh, um, wait. You missing? Let me see. No. Okay, cool. Um, how do I move student loan from my credit report? And oh, do you guys do that. mentorship? We did answer that already. Um, um, ghost. Did we miss ghost credit? No, that was the one that I just said that we answered. Credit score, the same thing. What do you mean? Credit score, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, it just says credit score is the same thing or question mark. I don't know if it's Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> When, when are we coming to California? California? I don't know. I might send Dominique to California. Just, like, because her best friend's out My there. My best, best, best friend, like, we, since, you know, we've been five. She lives in L.A. Mm -hmm. So, I you need, to go, out there I need to go visit her. I might be in AZ in a few. I'm going to be, we're going to be in Vegas in March. So, Florida in January, Vegas in March. I don't know where we're going to go in February in between. I might go to AZ. Um, I DM'd you. Okay, we'll check our DMs when we're. I off saw here. Kendi, you, or Kendi, you said this is a virtual. When will it be available? What um, are you talking about? The five days to freedom. If that's what you're referencing, um, that virtual like mentorship, it's available. Like you can go and buy it. Yeah, it's like one of the last links in our bio. How do you remove accounts and collections? So, uh, that's like my specialty. I had so many collections. Uh, there's about three laws that I posted on my wall just a couple minutes ago when I was at the Sixers game where I talked about the laws that you want to use. The first three laws in that video are the laws that everybody uses to go ahead and start removing the negative items off of their credit report. It's a very simple process to remove the collections. So a collection shouldn't even be being reported on your credit report. So the first thing is you probably want to um, clean up your personal information on your credit report to make it easier to remove it. The next thing is you want to freeze the secondary bureaus. The third thing is you want to file an FTC report using those laws. After you've done that, you want to go ahead and go to the CFPB and submit a dispute against the bureau that is reporting that negative collection. Also, you want to go ahead and upload the documents through their website, and then you also want to send it off certified mail. You don't have to do it certified mail, but that allows you to have a timeline. So that's it. Besides that, if you get my course, I literally walk you through the steps of doing it all. We walk you, we actually sit there, we interpret the laws for you, 
we read them, and then we go through the dispute process, exactly what you need to do, step by step, and then right below there, there's all the templates and everything with all the laws in them and everything that you need to use, so you can just copy and paste. I just bought my package today. I have learned so much, and only on module eight. Oh you guys God. are so inspiring. Thank you. Yay. Thank you for going through and and yes. you know taking action. We mm -hmm. love. We just love people that take action, like going through it. Like I just remember purchasing a course just like mine, and it was three times the price. And I remember learning so much, and I was just like being so, like emboldened. I was just like, damn, like yo, all this information I didn't know, yep. and I'm learning so much. And I just, I remember it, so I know that feeling. I know that feeling. You just getting so much power. You're gonna be able to use it forever, and your kids gonna know. Like people don't even understand. I'm like, yo. It's barely for us. It's for the next generation. We got to make them greater. Mm -hmm. Someone said I haven't started. I have a. I had a semi my truck that was stolen, and insurance didn't want to pay it off, and it killed my credit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was for just, the bankruptcy. They're saying that they haven't started. Oh, oh, oh. I would. Um, I would honestly. I would car. honestly try to dispute the insurance situation i honestly would i would start there before you file a bankruptcy because you might be able to take you know it in your hands now and fix it before you actually go and file bankruptcy because once you right. file bankruptcy like you can get a bankruptcy off your credit report but it just sucks like it's really you know like right. it is tedious to and go if, about doing and if it's just the truck then that's just one issue that you can solve if there's a yeah. few more issues just really weigh it out like i would definitely start working on the personal credit before doing that because you can remove a lot of the things that are hurting you back how do i remove a repo it's the same, same way as a same collection that i just broke down we've actually had multiple people that have removed repossessions that are in our that have our credit essentials bundle and as you popping in let me know where y'all tapping in from y'all i want to know where y'all at because if i'm out there i want to be looking for y'all you know i mean same thing how do you use consumer consumer loan? Loan. I just broke that. I just broke that down. Yes. Um, I just actually broke down that process. And is that Teresa Husbands? Yes. That's in. That's in the credit repair module section. Um, if it's a charge off, it's the exact same way as removing negative accounts. Just go to that section. Um, uh, using consumer laws to remove negative accounts. It's in the uh, credit repair section. I have to stay out of Vegas. LOL. Now my man getting married over in Vegas next year. So we going out to Vegas. Amir, my guy. D -d 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 DJ Amir. <laughs> uh, appreciate the badge love, um, Vic, and everybody else that bought badges. I appreciate them. Questions, are CPNs a way to obtain credit? Never had a CPN in my life. Really don't understand them. I heard that they were illegal, but I'm not really sure. I just try to do like, so like, when I was younger, like, I was a hustler, right? Like, I was a hustler. So everything that I did, like, I did everything under the table. When I understood that credit is my foundation to my freedom and my family's freedom, the first thing was getting organized and doing everything by the book. My license wasn't even updated. Like, I was all over the place. Yep. I had to get right, right? And I did, I did everything the right way. So... And I stay away from anything that isn't going to help me get to that next level or get me booked. So I would stay far away from the CPNs. It's just a, you know what yeah. I mean? You don't need to. You don't need to. There's, um, there's, I mean, it took me about three months to remove the negative items off of all of the negative items off of my credit. And in that three months, I was able to, at the same time, begin building credit. I got Self Lender and uh, Rental Karma, and then I got added on as authorized users. And Within three months, I was able to increase my score by 226, 226 points, right? Mm -hmm. This is somebody who had over 10 plus collections, 10 plus charge offs, and, student loans negative, and everything. It, it varies person to person, right? Like it took Mikhail three months to get through that, but we were also in the process of like learning as well. So since then, you know, we've learned other methods and other techniques and mm -hmm. have, you know, even more knowledge to this day. So there was somebody in the group that just the other day, was fixed her credit. Mm -hmm. She almost has an 800 score and she decided to work on her sister's credit because she needed some help. She was able to remove four out of five collections and I think it was seven out of 11 heart increase, something like that, mm -hmm. in 24 hours, less than 24 hours. 
So it really varies person to person. It's all about you taking in the information, understanding it, and most importantly, applying it. Right. And if something that, I, that, that doesn't work for you, you got to start investigating it and go deeper into it. Like, there were things that I was taught. Like, we had one of the people the other day. She actually, um, she got a ton of results, right? And um, she made a post inside of our private Facebook group, which you'll get added into when you get any of our courses. Mm-hmm. And then everybody was asking her, like, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? And she just said, she literally hey, I, broke it all down. I went down, I went through the course and did it to the T. But I also did a little bit of tweaking on my own, and I made sure that everything that I was doing was lined up the right way. Like, if she was disputing a a credit card account versus a car account, she would make sure that it's very specifically laid out in her disputes. And that's actually what I did, right? But when I teach it to everybody, I, I usually teach it like, from what I've learned, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be specific and particular. But it's my credit report. I'm trying to get this off. Right. So right. I'm going to be extra particular. Everybody be trying to rush and get through everything. So, you know, but I'll give you the mindset like, hey, look, the very first section of our course is mindset. Mm-hmm. Who the hell thought that there was a mindset to win with credit? Mm-hmm. That's the very first thing. There's, there's mindset to win with anything. Period. Every single thing. Everything. I, I actually said that to somebody on my post today. They were, like, talking about mindset. Mm-hmm. They were saying that they were happy that we teach people, like, the right way to go about credit and things like that and like not to blow it and things of that nature Mm -hmm. and i say every single thing we teach we always start with the mindset yeah like as soon as we got our credit right we use that credit to invest into other things to level up our life like our business i'm not saying like you know go buy this go buy that like you're gonna buy things now and then you know what i mean but like we really invested a lot of money into our businesses and got business credit and then used business credit to invest into right. more literally you know we literally used our personal credit to invest into a mentorship yep. to learn how to get business credit yep and now we can teach it to you that's literally the free. play that's literally the play like use your personal yes. credit to invest into other people that are doing and have done what you want to do where you want to be and do exactly what they do that's what we did we literally just followed a blueprint to the t applied it and you know results absolutely like, rich rich forever nyc i'm trying to tell you our credit repair course is the best joint out there it is, hands you down. you you wait as much as you've been watching me, there's been people getting in and getting the results yeah. and coming back and commenting, bro. Yep. So the course for the collection accounts is the Credit Essentials Bundle. Look oh, you're killing me, bro. Look. What's going on, Amir? Uh, does your course teach how to start a credit repair business? Oh, mm-hmm. there you go. Mm-hmm. So for the for starting a credit repair business, we actually have um, it's an ebook bundle. It's called uh, Start... What is it called? Start Your Credit start Business your credit the right, business way. right Way. It's like the... Probably like the fifth or sixth link down on my link tree. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have gone through it and they say they love it. Uh, it's not really just an ebook. It's in an ebook form, but as you open it, you'll realize like, whoa, these are whole classes. Yeah. These are whole classes where, you know, we go through a lot of stuff. So. And we have actually, do you want to talk about the actually, wait list? We can now. Oh, yeah, sure. It's already. So if you are a credit repair business owner or you would like to start a credit repair business, and you're making less than twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month in your business, you're gonna to want to DM us waitlist right now, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna be opening up the doors to our credit influencer academy in a few weeks, mm-hmm. right? We're gonna be showing you how to scale your credit business. Um, if you want to do it manually, like really be on the ground, like how we did in the very beginning, we'll show you that. Then when you want to grow it digitally, right? Because there's, I mean, how many people are there on Instagram right now? Let me look. What? How many active users are there on Instagram? Oh, my God. I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to give you all the stats, right? Users on Instagram. Two billion. Two billion active viewers on Instagram, right? And there's, what, like 8 billion people in the world? Something like that? Right. Mm-hmm. And, like, let's say out of that, let's just say 1 million people are on Instagram. And, like, in America, right? 1 million out of that, 2 billion. Like, that's not even, like even possible that there's only 1 million people on there, right? But out of that 1 million adult Americans, let's say 70% of them have issues with their credit. So that means that that's about 700,000 people that need help with their credit, right? You can make one Instagram. We have Instagram posts that have reached 3 million people, right? One post, (laughs) 3 million people. 
So just imagine the reach that you can get and the amount of people that you can serve. But I'm going to tell you this. You don't want to do any mentorships or anything from us if you don't have integrity. Because we've been doing this for 10 years, right? And the only reason we're still, we're still standing and growing today is because of integrity, right? When people ask us questions, as long as you ain't been milking me, and you going to know if you've been milking me, like trying to be in my DM asking me question after question, when you clearly see I got a shit ton of courses for you to learn this information for yourself and have it for a lifetime, instead of sitting there trying to go back and forth with me when I'm living my daily life. I got two kids and a wife, a mom, a dad, five brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? I got sisters-in-laws, her mom, her sister, the 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 dragon we got. You know what I mean? The lizards, the fish. <laughs> I got a lot of shit going on. We don't have a fish. Right. So we when, have an axolotl, if you know what that is. But but if you are somebody who has integrity and you truly want to help people, I'm gonna help you get in front of the people. We're gonna help you get in front of the people. And be able to serve them at a high level. Yeah. But you got to really have that integrity and the right mindset of like, yo, like, we didn't even come into credit thinking we were going to, like, retire her. And, like, here's something, too, right? Like, we'll see a lot of people out there that have credit repair businesses. And they have people commenting on their posts, asking questions. And they don't even answer them. For and days. And like, why? I'm like, they're not there for the people. Like, they're literally not there to help people. If you're not answering people that are asking questions, like, why are you posting? What you is know the what point? I mean? Like, what is the point if you're not helping people answering their questions that they have? Like, that's so stupid. Like, that's something that Mikhail and I, like, that is, like, the foundation of our business. Mm-hmm. Is actually here to help people and support people. Okay? Like, like yeah. Walking we, in your purpose, right? So and, if you feel like... This might be your purpose to help people. This is an amazing way to be able to help people. So all you got to do is DM us waitlist. And there might be some people that we overlook, but it's not on purpose. And, you know, we answer DMs. I can't tell you how many times people say, like, oh, I tried messaging, you know, so-and-so. We're so far back. They don't hear anything. I know. We're not even current. New Jersey. Miami, Miami. Atlanta, California, and, you know, the realists I've come across. Without bashing our heads in with the price, and right. we're going to purchase a few things. Oh, that's awesome! Oh yeah, we might come out there. Yeah, we are I'm not thinking about taking a family. Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think the boys would love that. Yeah. It's we just like, so damn hard with them being in we, school. We like to travel like with our kids. I don't know. I'm weird, so like I'm like God forbid if something was to happen and we're separate from our kids. Like, I don't. I don't know. Like that just freaks me out. So I'm like, I want to be able to travel with our kids, but our kids are bad. So yes. it's like really difficult, you know, because like I want to travel, but they're bad as hell. So that the business, the credit repair class is ten times better than a business credit class because we yes. put way more time into it. I would not even ten times. It's, it's a course. A million times, like it's, yeah, it's not so a- thorough. That is, yeah. Get the credit essentials bundle. Yeah, the credit essentials bundle. Mm-hmm. How long did it take to obtain an 800 score? I've never had how an 800 it, credit no, score. No, how long does it take to obtain an 800? It depends. You don't... All right, so when it comes to trying to get an 800 score, if you got an 800 score, there's most likely a chance that you're not leveraging you, yep. or using your credit. Yep. And you want to be using the credit, not like stacking it up, yeah. like just to have a pretty score. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't <laughs> you don't want to just have an 800 score just so you can show all your friends your credit karma. Like that, they don't care. You know, mm-hmm. what are you doing with that 800 score? Right. Like, what are you, how are you leveraging that 800 score? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like, I remember when I first got into credit, I had a friend of mine um, send me a message talking about some, oh, she got a, a 800 score or whatever from just, like, paying student loans and stuff. Right. And I'm like, but you're not using it. Um, and I was at, like, a six-something. Fast forward two years later, I've been able to build multiple six-figure businesses and help other people do the same thing and to fix up their credit and change their whole life with a lower score so it doesn't matter I don't have any desire to have an 800 score honestly like I don't mm-hmm. know. if you're it leveraging like, your credit you're not gonna have that it doesn't really matter you can't find I, any credit stacking info on your list of products uh, we don't talk cre- about credit stacking credit stacking uh, we don't talk about credit stacking I'm not sure exactly what you mean if you're talking about how to obtain business credit then that's gonna be the 100k business credit bundle yeah I'm not sure what you mean by how you can make that much money with credit repair. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so much money to be made in credit repair because it is something that everybody needs, mm-hmm. right? So it's like supply and demand, mm-hmm. okay? Like, if people need their credit done, like, really fast, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to charge an 
um, more expensive price. Mm -hmm. So like starting out, you might not charge as much money because you're just starting out. You might do a couple people for free, mm -hmm. right? But there is so much money to be made in the credit industry. And it's not, you know, something that you necessarily have to or even want to really be in long term. It's something that we, you know, got in to help people out, also educate ourselves, help ourselves get the experience, you know, because ultimately we wanted to create a course to help other people. That was the reason why, you know, we were in that industry. And then as soon as we could get out, we got out because we're not people that want, like, I like customer service, right? But I'd rather be doing customer service for a product, not a service. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to help people, but I just didn't, right. I, it was too much. Like, when you're, when you're like, guys, tied look, up. imagine this, being in credit repair and somebody asking you for a payment plan. Yeah, like you want a payment plan, <laughs> right? Like, come on, like really, like let's think about it, right? And that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't want to sugarcoat things. Yeah, like, I'm doing everything up front. So I, when I first started credit repair, I did one client for 300. My my first client was my cousin. I was like, oh my god, I'm never doing this again. And then I hired somebody and I upped my prices up to five. Mm -hmm. Then I went to a thousand. And then when I ended, I was at fifteen hundred. So Someone you can said make I'd a love ton to purchase money. the course with this inflation thing. Our course is thirty two dollars. Inflation. Inflation. See. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't. Okay. I won't, <laughs> I won't even go there. Okay. Isn't is no 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 knock on the board, but like they keep asking about credit stacking. I don't I need to become friends. I need friends like you guys. <laughs> We're here. I need to deal with clients who don't listen. Okay. I oh love God. that question. Yo, you're going to love uh, the Credit Influencer Academy. Yes. Um, so look, DM me the word waitlist right now to join the Credit um, credit Influencer Waitlist. Sorry, somebody just happy sent me a message. So DM me the word waitlist and you guys can join the Credit Influencer Academy. If you've ever wanted to start a credit repair business, if you have a credit repair business and you're not making twenty to $30,000 a month in credit repair, then you need to go ahead and, and DM me the word waitlist so you can get into this mentorship because it's going to be crazy. I'm also going to give you guys, um, we're going to give you guys a copy of our system, right? The exact system that allowed me to get automated appointments, the exact system that allows us to sell digital products. Um, you're going to have the exact system. And over you know those weeks of us working with you guys, we're going to be mentoring you on how to maximize that system. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to, Dealing with people who don't listen. listen. So I have a couple things that I'd okay. say about that. Okay? We got so, two then. So with a couple, you know, the couple things like when people don't listen, first of all, that's why you want to charge a little bit more money because we have found in the past that when we weren't charging as much, people didn't appreciate it as much, right? And they weren't following directions. So it's like once you invest, they make that investment into something like that, like they're going to pay attention, mm -hmm. right? So... That's one thing. My other point is you really want to qualify that person first, too. And there are ways to go about qualifying them without the having, you know, like a high price. Like you can qualify them by using a credit, um, like a system. And we're not talking about like just the credit repair system. We're talking about the system that your leads go through so that you can properly qualify them. Because you don't have to take everybody on. You do not have to say yes to everybody. Okay, Facts. and you don't want to say yes to everybody because there are going to be some people that you just don't want to work with. Wait, I have one for her though. So, um, my other tip is this is a heavy gem. You might want to give me a badge after this one. Look. <laughs> so what I what I did was I created a, a just like how I have all my courses and stuff. I created a course specifically for a person who's going through the credit repair process, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a DIY credit repair course. So this allowed me to have what's called a unique selling proposition. What makes you better than the competition? What can you offer a value that's going to make them pay you that price? Right. That's going to actually serve a person, right? So what I did was all of the issues that I had, they don't listen. They don't, they don't, they, they running up their utilization. They still getting late payments. They, they still applying for things when they shouldn't be. What I did was first I made a PDF called the expectations of credit repair. Mm -hmm. And inside of that, it broke down all of the things that you should and should not be doing while I'm working on your credit. But on top of it, and I made a course with a bunch of videos educating them on every aspect of credit besides the credit repair process because I didn't want to confuse them. Mm -hmm. Right? So, okay, here's the fundamentals of credit. Here's how your credit score is calculated. Okay, here's how here's how and when to pay your bills. Here's understanding statement date, due date. 
Here's how to understand credit card utilization. So if you pay your bills and this is your utilization, your score is going to drop. Because I know that you know there's going to be clients who hit you up and say, well, my score dropped. Bruh, your credit cards is at 158%. We had somebody who we told to, um, they wanted to refinance their car, and we said, you know, you can go to the bank and ask them questions, you know, but don't do anything. She refinanced her whole car during the credit repair process. I think process. she got denied for it. Yep. Well, she tried to refinance right. her car. She got her credit pulled right. and all that stuff. So that's one good. of the things that inside the Credit Influencer, I'll have everybody do and teach you guys is how to create a unique selling proposition like, you can't just bust out the bando charging 15 Like, every time I charge no. 1500 they never said no. Right. Like, no one ever said no because I was providing way more than $1,500 of value. So someone said, how long does it take to learn enough to start a credit repair business? So um, everybody's different. You right. know, it really depends on, like, are you fixing credit for yourself? Like, you, you want to... You need to actually do it and understand it before you can start a business, right. right? So you would want to get access to our course so you can really learn everything there is to know about credit. You know, like, obviously, mm -hmm. we're still learning things because there's so much out there to be learned about. So anything we learn, we throw into our course for free, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. But you also would want to start with, like, family members and things like that. Like, mm -hmm. if your credit is good and you don't need to fix your own, then you want to practice on other people. So, like, your mom, your cousin, your sister, mm -hmm. whatever – you want to practice on them first so you can get the results because you don't want to just jump into something right. without the experience. And the other thing is testimonies are everything in this business. So if you can fix your cousin, your sister, whatever, you know, fix all their credit and you can do it for free for a couple and then you can start charging, right? Mm -hmm. First come, first serve kind of thing. Get a testimony from them. Even if they text you saying, oh, blah, 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 you know, whatever, message you on Instagram, anything. You want to get testimonies anything. from them because that's going to... Um, fuel your business. Fuel your business. Mm -hmm. Testimonies oh, fuel the business. So, so I already read that. My yeah. store, my, when I started the credit repair business, all I did was, the so I got a course just like mine. I got two of them at the same time. It's 11, 11, make a wish. All right. Okay. And what <laughs> I did was I would, I got all of my friends on Zoom. I hit everybody up. Yo, I'm learning credit. I, I think I got, I think I understand it. Everybody, let's hop in on Zoom. And then I got everybody to pull their credit report. Mm -hmm. And each one of my friends, I went down the list one by one. We breaking down everybody's credit report. We're going to understand what we need to do in order to build this up. Some listened, some didn't, some followed through. But it gave me the experience of being able to read credit reports and right. understand different things that I needed to do to remove negative items. So just do that. Does any of your courses talk about jump-starting your children teens credit? So it's not uh, something that I necessarily teach in, five days in the freedom? course, yes. But what I do teach is um, how you can start businesses for and with your kids. That's something that we personally have done. So our son has a t-shirt line that we put together for him for his birthday this past year. And people were buying stuff, you know, from his store instead of buying his, his gifts. He talks about it on his YouTube channel all the time. Like he made like little commercials and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, we teach that. We teach about like vending machines and other type of businesses that you can do. We never um, talked with about your kids. We never talked about like the exact Dominique literally the other day talked about the exact process to add a kid as an authorized user to help them build up their score by the time they're eighteen. Yeah, it's on I have it's a on reel page. on my page. You, have you can add it into one of our courses though. It's super simple. Yeah. Is your credit repair course free? No, it's thirty two dollars, so it's damn near free. Yeah. Free. It's free. Uh, okay, we'll do. Sorry, we're really behind on the questions here because we like to talk. I DM'd waitlist. This is starting in January. Uh, hoping sooner than mm -hmm. January mm -hmm. because we have our affiliate program coming out in January. Yes, so you should. should. Mm -hmm. My own first to get the hang of it. 100%. Yes, get the experience. And fix other people too, not just yourself. How much do you charge for credit repair? We don't fix people's credit. We teach people how to fix their own credit. We used to do credit repair, but we don't. If you anymore. need a referral, we can refer you to somebody though that does a done for you service. Why are my credit report, credit scores different on Identity IQ and my Score IQ? Um, because they have they they grade your score differently. Mm -hmm. Don't get so hung up on a credit score. Yeah. The main thing is do the credit profiles match because your credit, like everybody grades your credit differently, but the profile is always going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a if there's a collection. There's a collection. You got to remove it. If there's a late payment and it's on, all, it's a late payment. You got to address it. The scores are always gonna. They They're can always be gonna whatever. fluctuate. They're gonna be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Now that you know, so when you look at your score, you want to look and 
make sure is it Vantage? Is it uh, what's the other one? FICO? Is mm-hmm. it FICO eight? FICO, FICO eight. ten? It could be anything. The main thing is going to be the ingredients that make up the mill of that score, man. And that's really what's important. All right. Are we at the bottom? Yeah. Yo, we caught up. Oh man, we finally caught up. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So we finally caught up. We answered a bunch of questions. We said we were only going to be on here for like thirty minutes. Um. Once again, all of our credit is the credit essentials an online course. Yeah, yeah it is an online. Can you? All, so, real quick, all of our courses are um, are not like ebooks. Okay, most of our courses, I would say, like, oh, or I'm sorry, the majority of the credit essentials bundle is like 90 percent video, maybe mm-hmm. even more than that. You can even make it it's, into an app. Yeah, so it's all video courses that like step by step walkthrough that you can follow along. Because we're visual, um, or people are visual learners, so we're visual teachers as well. So we like to show you. See that? And we show you how, so you can't go and download the app on the App Store. Right, there's you can't a do way, that. There's a way to make it an app on your phone, which I love, because then you never have to, you know, like, go back and figure out your login info. And that's the thing, too. Any products that you buy from oh, us, they're all going to be available in one library. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to have a million different logins. You don't have to download stuff. Um, everything is all available in there, and there's no monthly fee. It's thirty-two dollars one time, mm-hmm. okay? And you get access to our private Facebook group. That's where we support right. and inform people in the group. Yes. How do you get the app? It's all once you get access. Um, there's a video in the Credit Essentials um, bundle that talks about how to add the course as an app on your phone. I don't know. You probably can't see it. You can kind of like see right that right there. Right here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also talk about it in the Facebook group. Love what y'all do and Thank our teaching you. community. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate, appreciate you as well. That. Is the link in your bio now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So both of us have link trees in our bio, and they're literally like exactly the same. Mm-hmm. So the, it's the very first link. It's the first link in both of you our You ain't going to miss it. Yep. And, then, and guys, for anybody who does purchase, what I want to tell you is the very first, like, test is the very beginning. Like, after you get it, like, you got to go and join the Facebook group and you have to answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, we're going to have to decline you and then tell you like, Hey, you have to answer the questions to join the group. The other thing too, like when you get in the Facebook group, um, if you want to like send me a message or something, um, there's a, a post that I did in there that will show you like how to get started and like where you should start. Or if you just type in like, I don't know, that'll probably be hard Mm -hmm. to find, but just pink lady, pink lady or pink candy, pink candy. can't read. Pink Candy, so is the account open or is the account closed? If the account is open, you definitely should try to um, remove them. You want to, So if you don't have a Facebook, you want to create one. Right. Because we don't, answer que- we don't answer questions like that in our DMs because our DMs are crazy. So if you don't want to have yourself be on Facebook publicly, see if you can have a family member's Facebook, make an alias name, like I'll let you in. Okay, but you have to be on Facebook. Like, you have to oh, make a Facebook account. Mm. You don't even have to. You act. don't want to be doing no, this don't, alone. Don't, 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 don't. You don't want to be doing this alone. But yeah, you don't. You know, you have to get in. Oh yeah, if it's open, you definitely should dispute it. All you need is one of your most recent bills, or like we stated before, you can actually. The first step is calling the creditor. Dominique just literally helped the lady the other day with multiple people Mm -hmm. to reverse late payments on open accounts. But typically, if it was more than two years ago, like, they might give you some pushback, but I would start there for Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, make one now. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Definitely do it. You don't have to add friends and stuff like that. Just make Mm -hmm. one just to get into the group. mm -hmm. We post things in that group that you can't find in other places. I actually, just the other day, took some videos from that um, Facebook group and put them in our course, too. And that's where we do announcements. We do, um, like, coupon codes and things like that. So you definitely want to be in there. Like, we're mm-hmm. very good to the to our people, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. You're welcome. How do I get in the group? Uh, send me a, me- a message or send Mikhail a message, and I'll send you the link. Yeah. For sure. We appreciate you, Mother. Do you suggest using a credit repair system to send letters out? No. Send it... Sorry. No, you want to send it out um, via, we teach you multiple methods to send it out. Like, you don't want to just send it one way. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the best results if you 
send it out multiple ways. And yeah, I heard you say about Metro too is a great way to remove items, but I've heard otherwise too. Like I've heard mixed reviews on that. You want to have it's as many ways under your belt as possible. Right. It's important to do multiple methods. So mm -hmm. you can mail, you can upload them, um, and then you can also do the online yeah. as Metro well. too, I mean, it's great. But we all know that there's not one single way of removing things off a of credit that report. That works for everybody. That works every single time right. for every single person. Right. So. Yeah, it's good to use multiple methods for sure. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to a credit repair system, or so, and then another thing that I'll teach you inside, if you guys have a credit repair business or you want to grow one, you can DM me the word waitlist or Dominique, mm -hmm. and we'll send you over the link to join the waitlist for our credit influencer academy. The one, I'm sorry, but the one thing I wanted to say about the mm -hmm. credit repair system is you don't want to use that system to send the letters. However, you do want to use some sort of system to track mm -hmm. your letters, track your customers, yes. things like that, because you it's very important that you stay organized, especially you know when you're working on people's credit. Like You have to stay organized. So we talk about all the systems, all the tools, literally everything you need to have like a six, seven-figure credit business. Yeah, and you can start with the Start Your Credit Biz the Right Way ebook. Yeah. That's in my bio, and it's only $32. Um, Hello, could you, oh, it's it will have, yeah. All right. Ouch. Um. Yeah. Any other questions, though? Let me see if I missed anything. Oh yeah, and then also like whatever dispute method you master, that's what you want to teach your assistant. You want to either hire an assistant that's already an expert and they have a ton of reviews, or you want to personally train your assistant. So that if anything happens, you could get in their ass because you know you told them. That's how we go about it. I was going to use the system for myself. Yeah. Oh, for you to dispute things for yourself? So if that's the case, what I would do is we have um, a credit repair workbook that you get with the credit essentials bundle that I created. And it's to help keep you organized. It's something that you can use. Um, and if you have access to Canva, like you can use it in there mm -hmm. um, as well and you know, fill in things as you go. What's your question on the fourth about the secondary bureaus? I appreciate y'all hopping on here tonight. Um, for all of our um, current customers, don't forget this um, the, with the holiday sale, you guys all get a $20 coupon. You can still use that. I have a question on the second day that is. Uh, there's uh, dozens of secondary reporting bureaus, but the main most important one. There's like hundreds. Um, so she many. said hundreds, so there's it's so going to be Lexus Nexus. That's the most important one. That's the one that I see most people remove, um, freeze that, and then they they usually get results. They're all important. It all depends on what is being reported on the credit. So when you initially dispute. You can just dispute. And if something comes back verified, they're going to have to tell you who gave them the information. So if you see one of the secondary bureaus pop up saying that, like, they this comp they gave them verification, then that's the one that you want to go look at and freeze. What's going on, BNB funding? I haven't, I haven't heard of Safarant. Hmm. No, I never froze that one. But it's probably out there. Like, a lot of the things that we teach are just based on experience. So I would never tell you something that I really don't know about. I don't know anything about And we're software. not afraid to say we don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably <laughs> not we that. We don't know about if it. If I don't know about it, it's probably not that important. I just focus on the things that are important to get you the results. If you just follow our method, you should be fine. Um, they Oh, so they report rent. Okay, so, yeah, if you had, like, an eviction or something like that, um, that might be one that you would want to freeze. Oh, safe rent. Okay. What is safe rent? He's saying that's a secondary reporting bureau. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What happens when they won't? TransUnion would not disclose who verified an account. Um, you have so, to, yeah, you have to just keep using. Right. So that would be like anytime anything happens to, like, if anything ever happened to us, right, we would just file the dispute based on the exact problem that just happened. What up, Keith? So if you feel as though. <laughs> It's illegal for them to wait. Who said it? If you feel like it's illegal for them to verify an account but not disclose how they verified it, which yeah, is that's illegal, a bunch of BS. 
then you want to include that into your dis- your next round of dispute. Yeah. Send it to them via um, U.S. mail, certified mail. Up- upload it on our website. Complain on the CFPB. And if you can't, you know, maybe you don't have don't to want BBB? to send certified mail. Like you don't necessarily have to send certified mail. You can send out regular U.S. mail too. But some people like to track it. So for tracking purposes, you know, you want to do certified, but you don't have to. I have my name on the crap ears, which they have cracked, but in the wrong order. So would that be considered inaccurate to dispute, example, my middle name, last name, then first name? I think that's just how that one bureau reports it, most likely. Yeah, so a lot of times, like, if it's, like, last name, comma, and then your first name, and then your middle name, like, that technically is correct, because that's how some um, mm-hmm. some list it out. Like, if it has... The fir- like, if the first name has a comma after it, that is te- typically the last name, then it's first name, then middle name. Mm-hmm. So if there's no comma, then that's inaccurate. With Pop and Keith, Keith is actually the guy that uh, actually went through our program. He was able to remove some things off of his credit. Yeah. Um, like inquiries, personal information, updating. What else did you remove, Keith? And then he was able to get 50K in funding, and Keith only met us about two months ago. He said about eight to ten weeks. Do I have to freeze the consumer reporting bureau such as Sage Stream? Yeah, that it definitely helps depending on what you're trying to remove. Definitely, I did it. I, I froze as many of the bureaus that I knew about at the time. I froze ARS, Sage Stream, Innovis, Lexis Nexus, so and Core Lexus, Logic. Yeah, Lexis that was it. Nexus and. He said, "Hey, Harry, tell me." Together, I think now. Can I ask a question? Do I have... Oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry, hey, Dom. <laughs> is that it? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I was fortunate to get my name updated. Yes, that's mm-hmm. huge. And the other thing, Keith, that you mentioned in the group was working on one bureau at a time. That's like a major play. Mm-hmm. Like, if you focus on one credit bureau at a time, like the one that is like has the um, least amount of negative items on it, like, just start small. You don't have to do all of them, right? I thought LexisNexis was only used in law. No, it's not. Mm-mm. That's funny that you say that because LexisNexis, like, we would use that in banking. So, yeah, no. Mm, I'm not sure which secondary bureau holds auto loans. That'd be a Google. I would maybe Google it. That'd be a Googler. <laughs> yeah, I'm not about to Google right now, but that's a Googler. I don't, I'm not, like, an expert on secondary bureaus. I literally... The ones that I put in there are the ones that I froze, like ARS, Sage Green, CoreLogic, LexisNexis. Sorry. Um, ARS. Um, I'm not sure. But those main major ones are the ones that I froze, and I was able to remove everything off of my credit report, and nothing ever came back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Keith said one bureau at a time is key. Yeah, absolutely. One bureau at a time is key. Mm-hmm. Thanks for business on No, that's somebody messaging me. Me? me. You or me. I don't know. I'm on live, you. But uh, the what's their question? What somebody asked me a question in my inbox. I'm about to answer it. I don't know if it was you or me. Let's see. They asked me. Mm-hmm. How do you get a no doc loan at Truist 25k? Ask for a business loan or they. You can get a business credit. It all depends on how the structure of their business. If their business is over two years old, they can get the business um, line of credit and the business credit card. If their business is under two years old, then they're most likely only going to get the business credit card. They could get it no docs, but their credit report has to be super strong, and their business has to be structured all the way right mm-hmm. so that they don't investigate like more. Like If your business looks super legit, your credit score is super strong, you just apply and get what you want. Right. Did you freeze? Uh-huh. So I free secondary bureau to dispute and remove chart off. Absolutely. So... Um, you can try to dispute it without doing them, but you can, I mean, it, it literally takes like 10, 20 minutes to free. Well, it's, it's quicker than that, like five minute process. So you could freeze all of them in one night and then begin disputing the next day. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's how I, I showed them how to build out their credit report. Exactly. It got to be thick. Thick John is what I call it. That's what the uh, credit report got to look like. I'm telling y'all. It's so crazy, though, Keith, because, like, I made, where we made this course in about January, and we keep at, like, the only things that we have to update, like, the foundations of credit never changes. Understanding utilization and those things never change. Building a credit report, it never changed. It might, 
like there might be new resources out there in the marketplace, but as far as building it up, it's never going to change. So we re- made that course in like January. So a lot of things people reference to me sometimes I'm like, yo, I didn't even remember that. The only things we, <clears throat> I know you want to talk. I was going to say something or, like just random. Okay. The only things we up, like have to update is if there's a new, better credit repair method, we'll add that and update it. But be, or if there's a new resource, we'll add that and update it. But as far as like the little small things, I, I never even remember because we never really had to go back into them. Yeah, the affiliate program is going to be sweet. I'm oh, so yeah. excited about it. That'll we be starting out January the kinks 1. On that. I pretty much have it all ready to go. I'm just not pushing it until January 1 just because there's so much going on. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to say is I found this out. Amex, so before you could go and get um, like pre-approved from Amex, but it was mm-hmm. never a guaranteed approval. Well, now Amex has said that if you get pre-approved for one of the cards, that is a guaranteed approval. Wow. And it doesn't affect your credit score. Like, they'll do a soft pull. So it's kind of like um, Apple, in a way. Like, you can go get the pre-approval with the soft pull. But if they say that you're pre-approved for all these cards, you know, and you apply for them, you're guaranteed to get it. Where before, they didn't have a guarantee. Mm. So, wanted to share that with you guys. Okay. I'll probably do a reel on it, but for now. We'll Did we do an Amex application or just Capital on Tap? Just Cap on Tap. All right. We'll do an Amex application sometime next month. Yeah, add that in. Yeah. We'll add that in there. Um, yeah. And, guys, if you've ever been denied from, um, like, Amex or anything like that, make sure, like, Amex is very strict on making sure that, like, your addresses are all equal, everything. Like, everything mm-hmm. just has to be lined up the right way. I think that was one of the main problems we had when we first applied mm-hmm. um, was that we had just moved, and mm-hmm. our address had changed. And, like, I'm, I don't deal with any of that stuff. Like, Dominique is the best. She deals and with all that Amex stuff. Amex is somebody that, like, you don't want to inflate your income as much with either because if you were to, like, max out a card or whatever... Like, Amex can say, like, we want to review you, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to want documentation proving, you know, that you make that kind of money. Otherwise, they'll just blacklist you. Like, Mm -hmm. they'll close your accounts, and then you won't be able to open an account there. So make sure that you're not, like, inflating. Like, you can can put on your credit applications, like, um, like, future pace it. Like, here's what I'm expecting to make. Like, that's completely legal. But, you know, you want to be able to provide Mm -hmm. that documentation when it's needed. So don't, like... BS yourself, you know. Someone said, yes. "What are some secondary?" All right, so ARS, Sage Stream, Core Logic, and Lexus Nexus, and Lexus Nexus, check systems. Mm-hmm. The address change is my problem. Yeah, you want to change your address first. Like you want to make sure that your address matches on your license, on your um, <coughs> proof of address. Like you want to make sure that all those things line up. I feel like I'm catching a, a cold now. Well, our boys are both sick. And you, I just got over being sick, and I better not get sick again. I'm gonna be so mad. Mm-hmm. Like I've literally been sick every two weeks for like the past couple months. Mm-hmm. But all right, so I felt like we answered a lot of you guys' questions tonight. We answered them all. Um, all of them. We'll be back on hopefully tomorrow night. Um, give me all some game. Yeah, we're gonna be like on. Oh it man, I had a whole, I had a whole thing that I wanted to go through with you guys we'll do today. It tomorrow. Yeah, things that you can do to add an extra three to five thousand dollars to your month. bottom line a month, right? Yeah. Let me know, like the people that are on here, is would an extra three to five thousand dollars be like would that be helpful, helpful to, to you? your house? I know it would have been helpful to me. Right. So I know a lot of people like you know we talk about like yo get fifty k in funding, get a hundred k in funding, make twenty thirty thousand dollars a month. But like, I remember where I was at the point where yo if I could just make this five thousand a month. That'll keep her off my head, right? Like, I need this 5000 you know what I yeah. mean? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we definitely have a lot of ways for you to make if, like, okay. So, just to give you guys a quick little background, right? I'm 32. Dominique's, you? 33. 33, right? We've been running our businesses since we met, basically, when we were in our early 20s. So, 22 we actually started our first legitimate business, which was Bennett's Ice Cream, right? I was pushing the ice cream. Ice cream truck. Right, the, the truck, right? Oh, let me see if I can find the picture. Hold mm-hmm. on, I'm I found it the I'm pushing the ice cream day. truck, right? So that's how we Hold learned on. about getting LLCs, running businesses. 
And then at that time, they offered me to get my my equipment, like my inventory on credit. They're like, yo, we, we can put it on credit. I'm like, nah, I got cash. I'm going to use cash. And then I messed up the whole business because I was so young, right? We didn't Ended know. up selling the truck and all of that, that just, to, just to keep a couple dollars in my pocket. This was, hold on, let me make sure you can see it. This was the ice cream truck. Oh, my God. Okay. This was parked at, <laughs> his, at his parents' house. In the driveway. And we would drive it all through his, you know, parents' town, like, every day. Take it to his mom's work. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was our, this was our first business. This was, let's see if it says on here when this picture was taken like 20 okay here look my notes because i have the details on it because we had sold it then december 8th can you see that 2014 2014 mm -hmm. oh my god so okay so 2014s right i mean in 2014s when we started our first legitimate business wait real quick that's huge okay like make sure if that you are documenting your life your come up Okay, because you might not be up right now, and that's cool. We have not been up for, all, you know, many times. We mm -hmm. were up, then we weren't, then we up. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to figure it out. Someone so, obvi it obviously, it's backwards, yes, because it's on my phone. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, December 8th, 2014 is when this picture was. I guess I know it's backwards because I'm showing you You can send it phone. to me. I can pull it up. All right. Well, but, actually, no, I can't. No, you can't. <laughs> no, I can't. So, my point is, right. like, I document so much in the notes in my phone and like look at this like if i didn't put this in my notes on my phone like i wouldn't be able to pull this up and like show proof so like right. make sure that you guys are documenting things because you never know when you're gonna need it right so since 2014 i haven't really worked like a real i worked i worked um one time i was working um i was delivering medicine probably like 2016 or something like that, 2017 maybe i was delivering medicine for old folks but Literally, my entire like adult life. Yeah, it was like 2015, 2016, because it was before mm -hmm. uh, Weston was born. Yeah, so my entire adult life, I've been able to make income with side hustles, right? <clears throat> and until my side hustle became our main income, and I was able to retire my wife from what most people thought was just a side hustle, right? So I must be the king of side hustling, and I'm about to show you guys how to be the king and queens of side hustling as well, because... The it's not necessarily the thing that you do, it's the mentality that you have, mm -hmm. right? You want to first start obtaining high income skill sets, right? After that, you can start a service based business out of it. Mm -hmm. But your end goal should not be to be running a service based business because when you're running a service based business, the most important thing is taken from you time, right? Mm -hmm. This is why we run a digital business. Mm -hmm. I literally, well, we live <laughs> now, I guess, because. We literally only work about, like, we work hard about 20 days out of the month. This Those is, like, just a little insight into, like, what our schedule is. Like, it's crazy. So, I was so used to waking up at, like, 6 a.m., getting the kids ready for school, all that stuff, going to work. Now, our schedules are completely different, right? Like, where I'm staying up till 3, 4 a.m. most nights. Then I wake up a couple hours later, get the kids to school. Sometimes I'll go back to bed for an hour or two if I need a couple hours or just drink some coffee, get mm -hmm. to work, get my appointments done, my marketing clients, make sure everybody's cool for the day, go to my Facebook group. Like we're constantly working, constantly learning, constantly working on things. It's crazy mm -hmm. how your whole schedule changes. Right. And um, there was something else that I wanted to say too. I can't remember what it You're was. You're talking about the way oh, you Oh, no. Someone said, I can't even find a person to believe in the things that you two do. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, right? It's not about other people, okay? We never looked at other people for what they believe in and what their beliefs are. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's what we believed in, what we knew. Because we have been together since, what, 2012, <laughs> I guess? Like, 2012. And we have always been committed to our relationship to our kids to our family like family is super important to both of us like we always were committed and believed in what we were doing like i can tell you right now like i always would tell my mom we're gonna make it like we're like we're gonna do this like i always would say that to people i didn't give a shit what anybody thought i didn't care if you believed in me or not because i believed in me that's all that matters and you know you we believed in each other Mm -hmm. So, yeah, focus on your own beliefs. Don't worry about anybody else. Mm -hmm. can, yes, you can remove previous addresses, old jobs, yep. all that from your credit report. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 days. I'm creating digital. Jobs. And we travel, like, throughout the year, like, 
We used to not be able to take vacations at all. Now we can basically take one once a month. And we can take we our barely, kids with us. We could barely pay our rent. Mm-hmm. Literally. We were, on, we were on food stamps, like all that stuff. Hell yeah, Keith. You can literally create a digital product. Well, I ain't going to go too crazy, but you could create a digital product teaching people how to start that type of business because that's an additional income. Look at how many people on here said that they would love to make, you know, a couple, an extra three, three to, to five, five thousand a month. month. Like right? that's, that can be life changing for people. Mm-hmm. Do you do private classes? We do offer private, um, like consulting, like appointment for like 30 minutes. We don't do a lot of like one-on-one. We focus mainly on group coaching. So you want to make sure that you get in our Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. I'll keep working on this. I hope to meet you in person one day. We actually were talking about for sure in the future, probably in 2023, doing some sort of conference like where we have people come out. Like, is that something that you guys would be willing to do? Like, would you be willing to come to Philly? Or, you know, like maybe if we went somewhere else, I guess. But I don't know. I just feel like if people come to Philly, like, right. is that something that you guys would be interested in? Because we would definitely plan that. Mm-hmm. We're just so digital. <laughs> like we just are like online online yeah, it's like but. like that whole thing about time like when you really think about it there's people that are constantly going to events and events and events while you could be making money that whole time you mean yeah you it's not about other people at all like as long as you actually care about serving people that's how you're gonna win you don't need to be around people all the time mm-hmm. think like right now we're we're having a conference with 19 20 of you Right here, right now, right? Yeah. You guys are able to actually hear the things that we care about, hear some of the lessons and things that we teach. Mm-hmm. You can write it down, and now you got the lesson. You don't got to put on, you know, get an outfit, I know, get a room. But the thing is, there's something, like, I get it, right? I know. There's something different about meeting people in person that you learn from and, you know, want to meet in person. It doesn't really have to do with, like, trusting people, really. It's just, like, it's a different feeling. Like, sometimes people need that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, I'm all for that. Uh, I'll meet with y'all. And, like, what we would do is we would get, like, a group of, like, our network. Like, we would get our network, make sure they come out and that they teach you guys something, too. Like, it, it's not mm-hmm. just us. You know, for we'd sure. make sure that we have other people in there, too, teaching. Um, Someone had said. The Facebook group page, so you can message Dominique. Yeah, get DM Oh, wait, and I appreciate okay, the bad like city, city boy stay. Appreciate the badge. Appreciate everybody that said badge tonight. This is like the most badges I ever got in one night. Uh, do you guys and have I be paying, a I be consultation giving... to see if someone is a good fit for your credit repair program? No, you don't. Oh, are you talking about? Wait. Oh, you're talking. Oh, I understand. Do you understand the question? No, maybe she's, not. She's she's asking uh, running her credit business. Should you do a paid consultation to see if a person is a good fit? You don't have to. So like when you have. Oh when, oh oh oh! I understand. When you have so the system that I use or we created is called the ultimate automated appointment system right and what it does is it basically qualifies the person for you Mm -hmm. because there's so many there's two ways you can set it up but the way that i was using it was i wouldn't even get onto the phone unless the person filled out each and every single thing that was required because it's a test i'm about to be sitting here doing all of this work for you and you can't even fill out some simple information for me i'm not taking you on as a client because you're going to be a headache Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, people are so right. They're saying, like, it's the experience is different online than in person. Facts. They want the experience. So, yeah. So, um, you don't have to do a paid consultation. Now, I feel like if you do a paid... Con- nah, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not... Because you'll get so many leads. And then when you have the system set up, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You'll be able to follow up with those people who don't sign up. So, like, inside of our credit repair system... I haven't dropped a video on this in a while, but I used to drop it all the a time teaching people that have a credit business how your business should be set up so you want to have a marketing campaign for somebody who comes in and says hey i'm interested but they don't book hold on face for the facebook page if you're looking for the facebook group you want to dm me mm-hmm. and i can get you the link as long as you're in one of our courses you it's probably yeah. in your text or your email already and it's also and it's the first the, back office too. the first video in all of the courses the facebook group anyway but <clears throat> So when somebody says initially, hey, I'm interested, you want to have a marketing campaign, marketing to them to let them know, hey, I see that you're interested in fixing up your credit, but you need to book a call. Mm -hmm. After they booked a call, you need to have another campaign that is reminding them of the call. It's called a reminder campaign. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be letting them and you know that there's going to be a call at such and such time. 
And in that same reminder, we make sure that we say, hey, don't forget to pull your credit report and send it to us so that we can actually review it before the call or else we're going to be sitting on this call talking about your mom, your dad, the person that didn't give you $50 so that you could have paid the credit card. on. It's going to be all over the place, right? right? So we eliminate that beforehand. The person doesn't even do that. We're not even going to waste our time. But like, let's say you get on the call with them and they're not ready. They can't afford it. Uh, they're just flaky or whatever the, it may be. You can then move them into the next marketing campaign, which is called the follow-up campaign. And I'll give you guys one of my biggest secrets. When it comes to follow-up campaigns, we're all getting them. All like, Look at your phone. How many marketing text messages have you gotten? If you've gotten a marketing text message today, oh my God. let me know. Should Put a one in the chat. My phone? I Put sign a up. one in the chat. I sign up for stuff all the time. If you've gotten a marketing email, your email inbox is filled with marketing, right? And one of the things that me and Dominique do is... Oh, my God. Look, all of mine are like... <laughs> less. Look at all of those, like, marketing text messages. They're all... It's crazy. Yeah. So last year around this time, and I appreciate the badges too. I seen somebody else grab mine. Jay Styles, thank you. This time last year, my friend actually just texted me and said, "You was here last year. I was in Arizona with a couple of my friends after Black Friday. And it was kind of like my, you know, wind down, right? And I was sitting with one of my friends. One of my friends was doing a lot of money a month in high ticket real estate sales. My other friend is like a super manager at Target, right? So I was getting the, and this is like you can learn things from everybody. So I'm not going to be around you if I can't learn from you. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, <coughs> tell me how like the whole sales and psychology behind that whole thing <coughs> works at Target, right? And I learned some information. Oh my God. Hold what? on. I forgot what I was talking about. What was I talking to him about? Help. What was he talking about? I was somebody, uploading. Somebody let me know what I was, I was talking uploading about. Uploading something. Why about. did I go to Arizona? I went there to learn more about sales. You were talking about how oh. somebody said that you were there last year. Somebody asked me a question. It was based about on a question. Does the experience is different? Oh, go down. I think. Maybe it was about the paid credit. Oh, the credit repair. Okay. Um, oh, my secret. So <laughs> when it comes to following up and having a marketing campaign, every business, like, my friend, he worked at Target, right? So I was able to get the like the back end management, like mindset of how they run their business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I need to run all of my businesses just like this. I'm never missing a sale, never missing a holiday, all of those things. And then, um, when I do my follow up marketing, right? When we do our follow up marketing, it's always value based value-based follow-ups, right? So what a value-based follow-up is going to look like, let's say somebody came in and said, hey, I'm looking to get my credit fixed up, and then I give them the price, 1500 they can't afford it. Right. So I'm going to put them in my follow-up nurture campaign until they can afford it. And that campaign is going to consist of videos that typically I will upload to YouTube. Testimonies. Testimonials, where it's just value. Like, I'm giving them value as far as like, hey, look, here's three... Um, tips to help you to remove a collection. Mm -hmm. Here's some tips to help you remove a late payment. Just giving them tips on tips on tips because I'm going to kill them with value. And then either two things are going to happen. And this is why if you get into the credit influencer, you can DM me the word waitlist. If you get into the credit influencer, the very first thing has to be integrity because only two things are going to happen from that good value marketing or value-based follow-ups. Either they're going to get the result without you because you gave them the game and you have to be willing to not care or they're going to come back to you and say, Hey, look, you've been sending me so much valuable information. I truly don't got the time, but I do got the money right now. I would like to sign up with you because you've been on top of my mind. You've been sending me these emails, these text messages, literally in the text message, I'm going to send them a YouTube video, right? I'm going to send them that YouTube video. Your coffee? You're scared? Okay. Which baby is that? Weston. Right. You want to sleep in my bed? But yeah, that's my secret when it comes to follow-up marketing for credit, like for credit business, guys. I don't necessarily do those anymore right now, but I have the campaigns all written out, whereas that when people purchase an automated system from us, I just send them over the campaigns and everything. and just They're able to plug it in with their business name. Um, obviously, you can't use my videos, but... 
I have campaigns that are value based. So like for instance I have I'll write it out in an email form, like as far as here's some ways to start improving your credit and I'll put five tips in the email text and just you know, it's generic and anybody could use it and plug it in. When will your sales be over? I'm not sure. You could cut them off at any time, so I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep because at the end of the day we cut them things off at any time. They sitting right right here, the computers is right here. But yeah, you do got some time though. It's gonna be for the holidays, you know. But don't wait. You, you know, there's like that girl. She came in just in a week, cleaned up her credit. Now she cleaned up her her sister credit in less than um, 24 hours. Her sister. So you could be getting results pretty fast. Speaking of YouTube, do you guys share how they stand? Absolutely. That's one of the main things. Uh, we have a whole section. I got a whole section inside the Credit Influencer called YouTube 101, right? And it shows you everything the people to follow on youtube where i got my education but like we i mean i've been on youtube since i was like 12 years old a couple channels um but like as far as as a, in business as an adult i've been on youtube now probably like eight years or whatever 10 years so yeah i could definitely help you to understand and you don't need a lot of followers on youtube at all like you don't like i mean i've seen people get two views and those two views are sales because it's so specific, like, um, like let's say people have fraudulent accounts on a credit report. Simply making a video saying, "Here's how to get rid of fraudulent accounts." If somebody goes and they search that up on YouTube, you have a chance of coming up. I've had people specifically tell me they found me on YouTube by searching up a specific topic and hitting most recent. So that means I literally was able to generate that sale by just being in the game. It wasn't that I ranked at the top. It was just because I posted and that was the time they looked. Can you speak on your Navy Federal Union course? So the Navy Federal Hacks course teaches you how to get in the Navy Fed if you're not in there already. Um, it also teaches you how to get access to a high limit, a high limit car loan on the personal side. And then you can actually refinance that onto the business side and then I have my own class where I teach you how to get access to uh, the Navy Federal, High Limit Navy Federal card, um, credit card, and then the High Limit Navy Federal business card. I think Dominique does that one, or we both do. I think I talk, I talk about both of them. These are my favorite cards, obviously. Like, I talk about Navy Fed a lot because when it comes time for you to be able to get um, high limits on the business side, a lot of times, especially when you're leveraging your personal credit, they're going to look at the limits that you have on the personal side. So if you only got them discovers and, and them joints that only give you like four and under, you know, you're not going to get a lot of money, right? Because you haven't displayed that you're able to manage a lot of money. So Navy Federal, they said that Navy Federal will be giving out uh, 15, 20, $25,000 credit cards. I'm like, well, I need to go get one. We got in the Navy Fed, I think. Did I get approved? Dominique got approved first. And we actually got denied the first time we applied. Why? Because we uh, got in over the phone, and Dominique went to went the green car, right? And she applied right then and there over the phone, I believe. There, or we asked him. We're like, hey, can we apply now? Because just like a lot of you, uh, this shit was new to us at one point, right? And we didn't know if we would ever get to the other side. And a lot of things, people telling us we don't know if it's true. So we had to go do it so that we could learn. And a lot of things we was told wasn't true. But when we, we learn by simply doing. So we made our mistakes already. We literally got denied from Navy Federal the first time. Why? Our credit score was fine. They didn't have no negatives. Why did we get denied? We had absolutely no relationship with this bank at all. You know, we were fairly new to building credit on our own. So... For us to just come here to this bank and think that we're going to get everything we want, it don't work like that. That's why when we make our videos, we always say, build your relationship for 20, I mean, for 30 to 31 days or more. Reason being, because we ran into that mistake. So when people are like, oh, that don't work. Like, Bro, we literally know. Like, we already did it. We got denied. So people are like, oh, I got denied. Okay, cool. I got denied too. Okay. What you going to do about it? I've never seen a white Navy. That's uh, the business. It's a business card, family. What's the business credit the card? The gold business joint. Gold? I said gold business. Oh, gold business. Go biz. Go biz.
rewards, all right? <laughs> nah, but um, I have a Navy Federal already, but didn't know anything about car play. I'm going to have to purchase that. Yeah, a lot of plays in there, bro. A lot of plays. And it, I go, you know, obviously way deeper inside of the, the course, so. But yeah, and I, I'm not sure if they have another, they have a MasterCard or Visa for the business. You can choose. In the business application... Yeah, Visa or MasterCard. Uh, their business application isn't that simple as other ones, but, I mean, it's... I did it, or we did it, so... I mean, I'm sure you guys can do it, too. None of this stuff is really rocket science. It's just information that you might not know or just bits and pieces that you might not have, and you just need them. That's all this thing is about. And there's people out here, you know, giving you all this information or trying to give you the information for 1500 and more, you can go get it for $32 right now. Mm -hmm. And I won't ignore your questions. Well, as long as there's not too many. Like, obviously, like I said, I, we I won't. live a daily life. If Mikkel doesn't answer, I answer. Right. I was answering mad people today. Yes. I was sleeping. You got a day off. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up now, guys. Uh. We're going to talk more about getting to the bag tomorrow because y'all oh, said shit. that 3 to 5K a month would be amazing for y'all. I'm about to really just buckle in on that and help like 100 people get to an extra three to $5,000 a month because my mission, if you don't know, is to free people, right? It's to free people from the 9 to 5, just like I was able to free my wife and free my family. I want to free other people because it is modern-day slavery, like, I don't even want to get into it. Like, it makes me so upset, like, that somebody can put a cap on your greatness. Like, we are all God's beings, right? We were sent here from him to be great. And you're limiting yourself, and you're letting other people limit you. And a lot of times, it's not even the what. It's, it's this. You don't believe. You're looking at everybody else. You're trying to compare you trying to compete. It's not about that. You have to get grounded with you. Everyone has their own path, you know? Everyone has their own purpose. Mm -hmm. And you just have to figure out what that purpose is. And sometimes it's really difficult to really narrow down, like, what your purpose is. But if you're doing good by people, you know, and you're, like, a good human being, and you just keep going down that path and just work on your mindset, read really good books that are going to teach you things, apply things that you learn, like actually use them in your life, you're mm -hmm. going to eventually find your purpose because you're going to find things that make you happy. Because something that I really loved about my job is I really liked talking to people and helping people. Like that fulfills me. I'm a, what do they call that? When you like, um, like to help people. <laughs> what it's mm. called i forget what it's called people a pleaser. people pleaser i like to help people like that fulfills me so i had to figure out what personal assistant how can i move yeah like <laughs> i was i was an executive assistant so how can i move what i love from Top a career Jack. and do it for myself for my own business like how can i fulfill this myself oh my God. without looking for that fulfillment elsewhere that's so truly what it was if you yeah so like if you're do like if you love your job figure out what you really love about your job and figure out how you can recreate that in your own life in oh your own God. business like that's the truth guys like i literally would look at her and the amount of work that she would put in for her job. And I was like, yo, if you could come and do that for us and our family business, we're going to be millionaires. Mm -hmm. Right? We not there yet. It's a mind shift but, thing. Because yeah, I felt... Four or five months in? Because I was getting so much, like, from helping people, like, at the bank. Like, I really, truly loved it. I had really good relationships built. And, like, I was learning so much. Like, that cup was completely filled for me there. But then it got to the point where I was being asked to do things that, like, were making me go crazy. Like, above and beyond, working on weekends, things that I didn't want, you know. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like, this is my moment. Like, I, like it took me 16 years to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So, for you guys, like, your time is going to come too, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to continue to work on your mindset and really figure out what fulfills you. Like, you have to figure that out. You might not know right now, and that's okay. Because I didn't know. Do you say? Do you spell it Mar Marjay? How do you How do you pronounce your name? He's 
I'm not going to be able to tell you probably. You can write it Ma- out. Marja. Yeah, how would uh, how would right. Facebook say to pronounce your name? So he, he loved the course. <laughs> loved the admit, course. Admit my complaints today. today. Yes, yeah. looking forward to hearing about those results. Absolutely. Very we want to see what's going on with them. Be on their heads tomorrow. But yeah, everybody, you all have a purpose here on Earth, whether you know what it is or not. Even if your purpose is to be a good parent and to, you know, like really be there for your kids and parent your kids, there are ways that you can fulfill that purpose and also make money doing what you love to do Mm -hmm. too, right? Because if you're a really good parent and you dedicate all that time and energy to being a good parent, you can teach other people how to be a good parent too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Literally, you can make money doing anything, teaching people anything. What he said, he says, be fruitful. It's on my whiteboard. Be fruitful, Mm -hmm. multiply. Do replenish and subdue. I'm not going to go into it all here. Marge. See, there we go, Marge. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, guys, so if you are just getting in, make sure you go back, rewatch this entire live. We dropped so many gems. I'm tired. It's now midnight. We will see you guys tomorrow, all right? Yes, we'll be back on tomorrow. Have a good night.